Hey, this is Russ. Hey, thanks for watching the last video I made about batteries. It seemed to have been a pretty popular topic. Everyone was talking about things in the comments. And I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, the batteries are a concern. Um, now, I know sometimes people don't like to hear about, you know, the negative things that happen with e-bikes, but we all have lithium ion batteries in our in our bikes. So, yeah, it's a topic that affects all of us. So anyway, I just want to say thank you for, for watching that video. Now, here's a couple things that I found out recently that you might be interested in. I saw an article recently was sent to us uh, by one of our subscribers, John, who's always in contact with me. And he sent me this article about how the car manufacturers are interested in getting into e-bikes. <laughs> you know, I read that and I was I chuckled through it because I said, well, that kind of tells us that, you know, they, they see that some of their market share is going away towards the bike. Now, you can't use a bike for everything, obviously. I mean, can you imagine trying to transport all the stuff the truckers do? <laughs> you can't you can't bike everything, right? But uh, on a personal level, you know, could you use your bike more so than your car? And there are times that the bike is perfectly fine to use over the car, right? So, uh, th but to hear the, that the car manufacturers are trying to come up with their own e-bikes to compete tells me that uh, they're seeing some market share being lost to the bike. <laughs> uh, they showed an example of the Hummer inspiring a company to make a Hummer branded uh, e-bike. I think it was like $39.95, something like that, or $39.99, something like that. Um, $4,000 bike. It has dual motors. Yeah, there's a Bafang motor in the front hub and a Bafang motor in the back hub. So it's a double hubbed motor, one on each wheel. And, you know, that's going to help pull you over uh, hills and things like that, right? So it's going to eat up a lot of power. Um, surprisingly, I didn't think their battery was large enough to be able to sustain uh, double motors. I think they should have made the battery even bigger. But I think the article was saying that, you know, it, it was kind of ridiculously uh, designed how it looked and everything. But there's nothing ridiculous about that bike. That thing looks just pretty much the same as all the other bikes I have currently, <laughs> except it's got two motors on it. Okay. So maybe the, the person who was uh, doing the article hasn't paid much attention to what current bikes look like. I mean, if you look at like my Hemiway Zebra, that doesn't look that far off from that uh, from that Hummer bike. Yeah, it's got that big fat down tube, right? I'm looking here on, right next to me here is the Magicycle uh, um, uh, Deer. That's kind of big. And then next to that, I have the, uh, the Magicycle uh, Ocelot Pro. That has a pretty big down tube. The thing is, is you know, these down tubes are holding 20 amp hour batteries now, so they're they're kind of kind of fat, right? And that that Hummer one isn't that much different. So, to me, uh, the Hummer bike did not look that much different than the uh, other bikes really do. I'll put a picture of the Hummer one up here so you can see it, <laughs> and you tell me if if it looks ridiculous. I I think it looks kind of cool to tell you the truth, but. Um, I don't know. Whoever wrote that article, I don't think he's seen enough e-bikes lately. <laughs> All right, something else I wanted to talk about. Now, we were we were talking about batteries. And we were saying that, you know, battery fires are happening, that uh, sooner or later, you know, people are going to be using the, ba the bikes to go to different places. And so now hotels are asking them not to bring the bikes into the hotel. And I, I just started realizing this more since I was researching, you know, maybe going up to... Uh, up to uh, the uh, uh, the Mackinac Island uh, up in uh, Michigan, and, and also uh, we were planning to do Door County in Wisconsin. And uh, these places are basically saying, we don't want your bikes inside our rooms, okay? Whereas that probably wasn't a big deal, you know, before the e-bikes started to come up, and then they're, they're hearing things about fires. But, um, you know, uh, many of you guys have voiced some concerns about this because if you try to go on a trip and you bring your bike, you might not have a place to put your bike. Um, I kind of see the point of the hotel, though, all right, because, you know, if, if we've had fires because of e-bike battery fires and people are charging their batteries inside the uh, inside the rooms and they cause a fire, they could burn the entire hotel down. I, I see their point. I don't like it, <laughs> but I see their point. OK, um, so so what, what are they asking us to do? Well, one hotel um, had asked that. You don't bring your bikes into the room. If you do, it's a $250 charge if you do it and get caught, okay? And um, they said for charging of your batteries, um, 
Uh, well, well, first off, they want you to just lock up your bike inside their storage shed. Well, I don't feel comfortable with that either. As you know, I don't like leaving my bike locked up anywhere. If I can't see it, I don't want to. I don't want to leave it, even if it's locked, right? And um, they said lock up the bike in the storage shed, and then you can charge your batteries next to their Tesla charging stations that they have. So I'm thinking, am I to leave my bike battery outside <laughs> with the charger and hope nobody steals that? I mean, these, these, these batteries are not cheap. Some of them could cost $600, $700, $500, depending on which brands you're buying it from. And plus the cost of the charger, right? Am I, am I to leave it there? So here, here's what I was thinking would be good. If, they, if they're going to make us do that, what they should really have, and I don't know if they have this or they don't because I haven't been to the hotel. <laughs> so I'm just reporting what they said, you know, charge it over there. Um, I'm thinking they should have some type of like a storage bin for all the various batteries from each individual person that are lockable. Okay, so you put your battery inside this, uh, like a mailbox slot. Think about that. Like if you go to the post office, they have a mailbox, uh, mailboxes for people who pay for PO boxes. Something like that, right? Not not with a padlock that's hanging out where they could just take a bolt cutter and cut it. Something that you need a key for it. And the only people who would have a key would be uh, the management and also you, right? So they give you the key, you put your battery in there, you put your charger in there, there's an electrical AC outlet thing for you to plug in, and then you charge it. Now, I, I know they do something similar to this uh, during the RAGBRAI rides, uh, where some of these people who pay for advanced services where they can, they, they set up your tent and everything like that every night. And, and for your charging uh, of your e-bikes, if you bring an e-bike, they have a uh, a trailer, I think, where they where you can charge your things. You can charge your phones there. You can charge your cell phones there. Uh, charge your batteries for your bike. All that kind of stuff. But again, it's not really secured in the sense that, uh, yeah, there's there's probably who, somebody who works there that watches over it. But they're they're kind of out in the open, S separate slots, but they're out in the open. That's that's what I've seen on on YouTube. Okay. But since they can't do that, I'm thinking they should have something like a, like a mailbox slot at a, at a PO box where they have a key that locks and opens and locks the uh, the door there. And then you put your battery in there and then you charge it, okay? If they did that, then I wouldn't mind. Now, not all bikes have the ability to take the battery out. Like for instance, the Magicycle commuter bike, my class one bike, I can't take the battery out of that. It has to be charged on the bike itself. So what do they do for those instances? Now they may say, you still need to store your bike in the bike storage uh, shed and lock it up okay maybe you're forced to do that maybe you can charge it there maybe they allow that but again i don't like having to leave my bike unsecured there i to me if i was going to to go someplace for a long time for several days i'd rather take that folding bike then at least i can leave the folding bike in my car now that's not to say somebody can't break into my car and steal the bikes but if they're going to go to that that, that extreme they're going to do it right so it doesn't really matter other than in fact now they've damaged my car as well and stealing my bikes but uh, hopefully, you know, if, you're, if your windows are blacked out enough and nobody sees that you have a bike in there, uh, maybe you don't uh, load and unload your bike right at the hotel, you know, so when you pull into the hotel, you don't touch any of the bikes. Nobody knows it's there unless they're specifically scoping it out and looking through the windows looking for bikes, uh, which case then you lose anyway. But I would not want to leave a, a bike on a bike rack and leave that outside all night long, right? That'd be even worse. So I'd rather at least be inside the car. And the only way to do that is a folding bike. And then maybe you take the battery out and charge it at that point. Now, for me, we're going to Door County. Uh, we know that up there in Wisconsin, they don't want you to do that either. So now we have a dilemma too. We either have to leave those batteries um, in, in their assigned storage uh, area to charge batteries next to the Tesla thing. And I don't know until I see it. Or you sneak the battery into your room and you charge it, okay? Now, you take a gamble there, and, and the hotel takes a gamble. Now, will they notice you do that? If they notice you, you get a $250 fine, okay? But if they don't know that you're doing that, uh, they're not going to knock on everybody's door and check it. They have to take the word of the guy that he's not going to do it. And uh, so now I'm on, in, in the dilemma, right? I have to decide, do I sneak it in and do it anyway? <laughs> or do I charge it the way they tell you to charge it? I'm undecided. Quite frankly, I know that my bike, um, I charge it at my house, that they don't blow up there. <laughs> not to say it's not going to blow up later, right? But um, if, if I've charged it many times in the house and I don't know, I don't think it's going to have a problem, I probably might even just sneak it in, right? 
In which case, at that point, as long as I don't get caught, I don't get the $250 fine. <laughs> but if I get caught, that's a $250 fine. And of course, if you burn down their entire hotel, you're in big trouble at that point, right? I think you're going to be in big trouble regardless. So any way you look at it, we lose. <laughs> yeah, we kind of lose. So this is a problem. Yeah, weigh in on this factor, okay? Tell me what you think about this whole thing with this charging and not being able to charge in your room and, the, and that that thing uh, i see their point okay i would be nervous too i'm nervous now i'm nervous with my own house and my own batteries that i charge i i can see why they would be nervous because they have no control of who brings things in they don't know what kind of batteries people are bringing at least for me i know that the batteries that i'm using are batteries that come with my bike okay the only one that doesn't is that unit pack power one that i have on my rad rover 5 but again i've charged this thing many 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 times have not had an issue with it. Uh, one battery did have a problem with it. They say the BMS board, but they replaced it with a new battery. That didn't have a charging and explosion problem, okay? It just wouldn't give me the power that I needed. And after using it many times over this past year, I know it's it's safe to use up to this point, okay? Now, others have said things like, uh, you know, if you drop your bike, you need to replace your battery. And they said rad power bikes towed uh, told uh, this one gentleman or or whoever it was that mentioned in the comments uh, that you know if you drop your bike and your your your, your battery had an impact you should replace your battery well that's easy for him to say you know how expensive that thing is <laughs> I think the Rad Power Bikes battery is like six hundred dollars okay um, so will people do it I'm gonna say they're not gonna do it yeah it's six hundred dollars. <laughs> So you, you have a little accident, you, you drop your bike. You're going to keep replacing your battery every time you drop your bike? I'm going to say people aren't going to do it. Now, should they do it? Probably, yeah. They probably should because out of safety-wise, um, things inside the battery could have got jarred. You might have a potential problem now, okay? But realistically, will they do it? And I'm going to say realistically, they probably won't. Yeah, I mean, I mean be, be real. Would you do it? <laughs> Think about it. Tell me if you would do it. I would tend to think most people won't. Yeah, they know they should. <laughs> but I think people will look at that $600 bill and say, I just dropped a little bit, it'll be fine. <laughs> I can see that happening, right? Anyway, th these are some of the concerns that we have coming up because um, the, the whole thing with the e-bike is, is, is an issue now. Yeah, because we're, we're going to be taking these bikes and go further with it, right? Even for myself. Uh, I, I got a rack now on the back of my car. I can take my, my bigger bikes out when I want. Um, I have uh, folding bikes now. I can put that inside my SUV and take that out if I want. So we're being more mobile with it. Now, others have said you should use your bike more often, do, it, do, do everything with your bike. It's not that practical. Uh, even when I go to grocery shopping with my wife, I stay outside to watch the bikes while she goes in and goes grocery shopping. I mean, it's not like both of us go grocery shopping at the same time. <laughs> we may ride there together, but she does the shopping while I watch the bikes. I'm always fearful for someone stealing the bike. So here's what I'm thinking that needs to be done uh, for, <laughs> I don't know, wh wh wherever, okay? If you want more people to use bikes and save on gas and everything, you need to have a way to secure those bikes wherever they shop. OK, so that uh, it's not something that's out in the open where anyone that can come with a bolt cutter or an angle grinder can kind of cut it and and run. Now, the angle grinder is going to grab a lot of attention because it's noisy. But, you know, a bolt cutter for somebody that uses a cheap lock. Yeah, just snip that thing and steal the bike. So I think stores, if they want people to shop there, they're going to have to start letting people bring the bikes in. And then someone's going to have to be there watching the bikes. All right. So unless the guy actually has the combination or he has the key to open up his his bike lock, you can't cut it with a with a bolt cutter without someone seeing you do it. Right. If the bike is outside and nobody's watching this area. Yeah. All I have to do is I drive up with my car. OK, if, if I was a crook, I drive up with my car. I see all the bikes. I look at the one that has the cheapest locks. I I jump out real quick, grab a bolt cutter, cut it real fast, grab the bike, put it in the truck, and run. That doesn't take that long to do, okay? It'd be tougher if it was inside the store, is what I'm saying. If some guy was, his job is to watch the bikes that come in, that people don't come in with bolt cutters to, to cut things, then I might actually use the bike for shopping. You see, you see what I'm saying? So that's just my thought. Comment below, let me know what you think about that, right? Or how how would you do it that would be safer for your bikes 
uh, if you were a retailer and you wanted people to come and you know they're starting to use their bikes, they're concerned about losing their bikes, how would you solve this problem? <laughs> and don't buy cheap locks, all right? It's not worth it. You want good locks and don't buy the cables. All right, the cable ones aren't good. They can cut right through that. Okay, now having said that, I do use the cable. Here's, here's what I do. My, I have two locks that I have. I have a, a kryptonite chain with a, a one of these, the forget about it, uh, locks, heavy duty chain and lock, okay? It takes a lot of effort to break that thing. And then I also have the Abus bike lock, which is kind of like a, I don't know, it's a different shape thing, but it's, it's, it's easier to carry around. But they're not big enough to go through my front tire and the frame and the thing I'm locking it to. So what I typically would do is I would lock the frame to whatever I want to, that stationary object I want to lock it to. And then I will use a cable to go along with that bike lock to, to secure the front wheel. All right. Now, I might not lose my bike but I might lose my front wheel, right? Because they could cut through that cable. But how else am I to do this? The alternative is I carry two Abus locks, <laughs> one for the frame and one that goes around that thing that goes around the front wheel. I mean, it's, it's to the point where how many locks do you want to carry? So they're heavy. You don't want all that extra weight. So I carry one big heavy lock, whether it's the Abus or the, the chain. And then I also carry the, the cable that I use to kind of swing around the front wheel, hoping that that at least will save the front wheel from a quick grab and, and steal, okay? If a guy comes with a cable with a cable cutter, what, what can I do at that point? I might lose a front wheel, but at least I keep the bike. So, of course, I'm stuck where I'm at because now I don't have a front wheel. But how else would you do it, right, if you don't want to carry heavy, heavy locks all the time and, and things? So... Think a little bit about that. Make some comments about that too, okay? Sorry to be doom and gloom for the last couple of videos, but these are the realities of e-biking. You know, we, we want to use it for things, but we have restrictions because of, of fear of losing our bikes from theft. And then, of course, like I said, the hotels don't want us to bring it, <laughs> leave it in their, their rooms. These are concerns. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Hey, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.